Um, yeah, we're here with Davey from AFI. Howdy. And they're on tour right now with Good Riddance. And uh, we'll see what's going on with them. So, uh, how long has it been since you guys have been to Montreal? Gosh. I don't know. I think you probably know better than I, than I would. It's been a long time since we've been here. Um, the last time we played here was in the middle of the middle of the city at the Rock Sands Frontiers. The park. The, rock, yeah. rock show. Um, what was that about? It was a year and a half. It was a year and a half, right? Yeah. yeah. Am I supposed to be addressing them? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's cool. Uh, anybody. It matter. It's all up to you. It's cool. Yeah. All right. And um, so what would you guys rather be doing? Playing something small like that? Or playing outdoors with like a bunch of drunks like sitting around and uh, hey, shut up! So with a bunch of drunks stumbling all over the place and shit like that. <laughs> what would you guys rather? Well, given the two choices and specifically that you've given me, I suppose I'd rather have these something small than to be than the drunk stumbling outside, but um, to further comment on the question, generally we prefer to play more intimate yeah. venues. Um, I'd rather, you know, take a little small venue and pack as many kids into it as possible than play a really big venue and have it, you know, kind of mellow and, and okay. Um, and a lot of the big places, it's necessary to have a barricade for, yeah. for you know, legal reasons. And um, I really hate that. Yeah. It, really detracts from the amount of fun that, that I get to have and I assume the amount of fun that the kids get to have. Well, I don't assume, I know because, you know, I've also been in the crowd, of course, and I'm as much of a fan of music as I am a performer. So I know exactly what it's like and it's, it's no fun to have the bear kids there. So if, if there's any choice in the matter, we would always prefer to play. You know, without the barricade, it doesn't matter how big the place is, but it's the barricade, no barricade. Really, that really, really messes stuff up. And I guess there's is there one tonight. There is. Fuck you. Yeah. Well, what was the the raddest show to you guys, like, either fun wise or something interesting? That's like the raddest that you've ever played in your life. Ever? Yeah. God, we've played some really, really cool shows. We um, we were lucky enough to be able to play a great, great show in New York City. Uh, was sick of it all. Uh, so nice. we got to play with Sick of It All. It was Sick of It All, Snapcase, Ensign, and Vision of Disorder. Um, That's like the dream show. And, yeah. and us, um, all of the Roxy, and we got to see we got to see Sick of All go crazy <laughs> in uh, in New York City, which was a great experience for me. I got to got to go out there and, and dance with the kids, and uh, that was that was amazing. That was one of the best shows we've ever played. Um, we got to play at the Fillmore. Rancid in San Francisco, and uh, and during during the show, uh, they invited me out to sing a song which, with them, which was which was really fun. That was great. Um, we got we got to do a few tours with the Offspring, which, which is awesome. Um, we played a lot of really really good shows. We've had a lot of great opportunities. Really lucky. And what was the band for you personally that would like influence you the most in your life? Like to either start playing music or that keeps influencing you to keep playing music? Um, two of the most influential bands, there's, there's really two. The Misfits and Minor Threat were like the two like biggest biggest influences. Um, but there were a lot, Dag Nasty and Black Flag and Negative Approach and Seven Seconds, the descendants and the germs. Yeah. All the old stuff. Um, really meant a lot to me and it still does mean a lot to me. And so when you hear like like reunions like with the Misfits reunion and stuff, what did you think about like when you heard they were getting back together to do uh, like a tour and stuff? I mean I think that's cool. It's I mean if fans want if fans, you know, feel that they want to continue oh, on. Um, I love I love the Misfits. I love Sam Hain. I love Danzig. Thought so. Um I really, really hope that there's a Sam Hain reunion. There's a lot of talk of that lately. <laughs> And um, I heard that they might do 12 shows, of which, if I'm not on tour myself, I will be at as also. many as possible. <laughs> Shit. I would be very excited about a Sam Hain reunion with, with, with Glenn, of course. <laughs> and what, like, new school bands, like, well, whatever. Bands like, that are still newer, together? Yeah, would, like, would you, like, say, would you tell kids right now to go out and see their live show or pick up their album? Um, there is a great, great band from El Paso, Texas. Uh, called Apple Drive In, which is an amazing, amazing band. One of the best bands I've ever seen. They're called Apple Drive In. They, they rock so hard. I just saw them. Uh, I just saw them play in Chicago to about 30 people, and it was one of the best shows I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Uh, great, great guys too. Apple Drive In is amazing. 
um, Snap case, I'm sure as everyone knows. And they join the tour tomorrow, don't they? Yeah, they oh, can, yeah, we're right. gonna have them tomorrow for like four shows. They're a great band. They were here like two weeks ago. Ensign, who's on tour with us, are a very, very good band. Um, the rest of the bands that I like that are still current, everyone knows about, uh, Rancid, Green Day, yeah. The Offspring. Um, there were some great bands that recently broke up, such as Strife and Dead Guy. Fuck yeah. Um, Strife's finished? Yeah, yeah, Strife's been finished for a well, while, dude. Strife's supposed died, to play here and they never play. Unfortunately. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, a lot of the stuff I listen to right now is, is kind of old. Kind of, I listen to like... When I'm at home, I listen to like uh, Seaweed and Quicksand. <laughs> Nine Inch Nails, and sure. Joy Division, and Cure, and, uh, and then, you know, stuff like Earth Crisis. And, uh, so, like, a big mix. Yeah, I listen to that, so. so. Cool. There's you. Yeah. And did you guys have fun uh, when you guys were shooting your video? Yeah. You guys, Which you guys, one? Um, yes, we had fun with both of them. Both of them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was fun true. shooting both videos. Nah. And what you guys, like, seem to, like, on answer that and stay fashionable, you guys seem to, like, have that whole, uh, like good fellas, Reservoir the dogs. Reservoir Dogs, like every like gangster business going on. Like, did you guys have fun with the dress up and the guns and stuff? And the oh photos? yeah, that actually was a lot of fun doing the doing the uh, shoot for uh, for the photos for that album was actually a lot of fun. Our friend Steve Ziegler, um, he's a great photographer, and uh, he walked around with us. He took a bunch of shots and took the photos for the cover of that album. Did it scare people? You're walking down the streets, just a couple of guys. No, nah, not just... really. I mean, we did it in Berkeley and. People don't notice much unless it's really, really out of control okay. in, in the city. I mean, we got people walking around naked and people painted like aliens and hippies and punks and they, you know everything. It's, it's too much. Yeah, you know. So guys in suits don't really cause much of a scene. So is uh, like Reservoir Dogs and stuff like that. Is that are those like your favorite movies or is just? That I love those movies. Yeah, all, the, all those you know those, those gangster movies are great. Tarantino did I mean, did really good with Reservoir Dogs. And, um, you know, Goodfellas, love Goodfellas, obviously. Goodfellas. From the first video. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, A Bronx Tale, and, uh, Cover Goes Away, and, and all that stuff is really great. I just got finished reading The Godfather for the first time. Reading just, it? Yeah. I never, yeah. never read it. It was a book first. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's great. What's great better, book. the book or the movie? Um, I haven't seen the movie. you never seen The Godfather? Oh, oh my book's always better. Uh, we'll now I'm going to see the movie now that I've read the book. Okay, cool. Uh, um, what do you guys think of the whole like the mix of hardcore punk bands? Like, yeah, there's a lot of bands like H2O, Good Riddance, Jughead's Revenge, and stuff like that. It's just it's a mixture of both. And some bands, just like some people, not bands, some kids don't really tend to like that. See, the whole thing about it is, is that bands like ourselves and H2O and Good Riddance uh, come from a time where punk and hardcore. As one. as one. I mean, it was hardcore punk, that's what it was. Yeah. And to us, and to most people who grew up on that music, that's that's what it still remains. I mean, there's been a lot of new, uh, new styles and new genres of hardcore yeah. and of punk. A lot of which are great and are very different, but it all comes from it all comes from the same place. I mean, it all started as the same thing, and. Um, and you know it's great. I mean, every, you know, just as long as the music's good, I don't care what you call it. Good. I mean, I, I don't care what you call it. I don't care what labels it's, it's on. But if it comes from the heart and, it, and it's good, then that's all that matters. All that matters you know? Cool. And uh, my last question being, what do you think of the whole attitude of uh, if you're not straight edge, fuck you, or you know, get out of my face type? Don't want to associate. That's ridiculous. I mean, it's really that kind of negative attitude that. Sheds, sheds the poor stereotypes yeah. on, the, on the whole straight edge scene. I mean, in the same respect that I don't want someone forcing me to drink, someone you know pouring beer in my face or blowing smoke in my yeah. face, respect. we should give respect to someone else who makes their own Cheers. choices. I mean, it, I, I don't want someone trying to pour alcohol in my face. No. <laughs> and so. I am not going to beat up someone yeah. because they're drinking a beer or smoking a cigarette. It's ridiculous and to make a change through that sort of like low mentality is it's not going to happen. Yeah. I mean it's, it's really ridiculous. It's piss people off. Yeah. I mean 
it, it's really unnecessary. Cool. It's really unnecessary. I, I think people can learn through watching other people's positive actions, listening to people, you know, Still reading good. lyrics, reading reading literature, yeah. and learning. You know, that's the only way things are really going to make cool. you get, get better. And for my real last thing, sorry, that wasn't my last thing. You were telling me before, your new EP, mm -hmm. can you tell us a bit about that? Just to kind of plug it? Or okay, sure. Sorts? Um, we have a new EP that just came out. I believe it uh, came out like last week or week okay. before. We've had it on the whole tour. Um, it's on Adeline Records. We are still on Nitro Records. Okay. But this release is on our friends' label. They just started, uh, not to say that Nitro aren't our friends, but our other friends who okay. started a label. <laughs> um, and uh, it's their second release. Um, it's a four-song EP. It's called The Fire Inside. We have it on um, CD and 7-inch. I guess the new 7-inch, the second pressing, is going to be on Dark Road Vinyl. Um, it's got four songs, two originals and two covers. One is a Cure song, and one is a Misfit song. Cool. 